Board taxes are always the solution. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Get your hashtag not sponsored coffee and let's look at this one because, you know, the housing crisis, the rental crisis, housing affordability. Here we're discussing things like increasing supply, reducing the red tape, maybe maybe making it easier for people to build. But no, 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 that's crazy. The solution is, of course, more taxes. Every time it's more taxes. I guess a generation needs to learn why the older and grumpier you become, you get frustrated with uh, just more and more burden placed on everyone. Yes. Oh. So let's look at this one from AAP. The tax on empty homes and vacant land to free up housing. So say you're buying a, a block of land and it takes a while to build maybe because, I don't know, an overheated construction market due to government intervention. Now you've got to pay tax on that. Isn't it awesome? Or maybe you're waiting to save up money to build on the land. You're going to be taxed on that. There you go. Tax is always a solution, guys. You try and get ahead, you try and get forward, and, well, they got a tax here. Now, remember this, well, remember in Victoria when they brought in the have your cake and eat it too laws where casual workers got sick leave and all these other perks, which they, uh, well, which they get a penalty for. They get paid more. So they don't need these things. But now, no, no, no. I wonder how a state running in so much debt just happens to also be a state that's using taxes to find solutions to problems. Victoria will broaden a little known tax to encourage more property owners to rent out empty homes and develop vacant land. Because we've got a Labour government, which is very interventionalist, not much. I'd say both sides are, both of our two major parties. They don't give a shit about your private property. They're going to dictate what you do with it. So if you choose to have your house empty, your investment property empty, because you want to, that's not good enough. They're going to penalize you for it. So, I mean, that's fundamentally, that's what it comes down to. Do you have the right to control your property as you wish and use it as you, as you wish? Or does the state have the authority to, well, force you to do what they want one way or another, nudge you. Sorry, it's nudge. They're not forcing you. They're just nudging you. They're penalizing you for not going along with what they're required. And, well, that's what Australia is like. That's what Australia is like. Don't kid yourself. Don't be surprised. We're not a, not a free individualistic society, not by any measure. Treasurer Tim Pallas on Tuesday announced legislation would be introduced to expand the vacant residential land tax statewide. Currently, the tax applies to residential homes unoccupied for more than six months, a year across 16 inner and middle Melbourne councils. Owners are annually charged 1% of the property's total value, meaning one worth $500,000 would be taxed five grand. Another tax. The proposed change will take effect in 2025, covering properties vacant for more than half of 2024. I wonder how they're going to they kind of find a way around this. This is the thing. The more taxes that the government introduces, the more energy and resources people spend finding ways to get around it. That is not innovation. That's just why we've got an expanding services economy. All these people calling for Australian need to Australia needs to manufacture, needs to do this. It's never never gonna happen, guys. We got all this bullshit just piling on. Why would you get into manufacturing when you just start an accounting firm and try and find what ways to get around the loopholes that Ah, uh, yeah. Exemptions remain for holiday homes occupied by the owner for at least four weeks a year. Pro properties occupied by owners for at least 140 days a year for work purposes. And when ownership of the property changes hand over the 12-month period. In a further change, owners of land in established parts of metropolitan Melbourne who do not develop it for five years or more will be liable for the tax from 2026. If you can't afford really to have vacant land in metropolitan Melbourne City, oh sorry, we can't afford to have metropolitan land in metropolitan Melbourne sitting idle year on year, he told a property council breakfast on Tuesday. Our clear message to landowners is either develop the land or sell it to someone who will. He denied blindsiding new Premier Jacinta Allen with the announcement insisting the policy was discussed by Cabinet. I'm not making it up as I go, he told reporters. Yeah, but she probably wasn't paying attention, was she? I mean, she stuffed up the Commonwealth Games. Good luck, Victoria. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, boy.
Oh. About 900 Melbourne properties are subject to the tax at present, netting the state $10 million. Under the first part of the reforms, Treasurer estimates a further $6 million will be recouped between 600 to 700 extra properties. So this is probably going to make no difference to their budget. It feels very political. The second element is forecast to add $31 million to the state's coffers and apply to 3,000 undeveloped properties. It's not about revenue, he said. It's about getting assets rationally and fairly utilized to look after those who desperately need a home. Well, how about, here's an idea. How about you reduce the burden you're placing on your citizens so maybe, just maybe, it might be a bit easier for them to save up to become a property owner? You know, why, why, not, why not that? Homeowners are required to self-report to the state revenue office or face a fine. This means someone will dob you in. It's the Australian way. They'll dob you in. It'll be dibber dobbers. It'll be people ringing up council saying, this house has been unoccupied. And then, then they'll force the person to rent it out and they'll probably find some asshole just to screw with the, the dobbing neighbour. So 90% of the taxable amount if deemed to have intentionally disregarded the law. So it's cheaper then. It's cheaper, wait, taxable amount, 90% of the value of the property or 90% of the tax that you're paid. So is it che- it's cheaper then to avoid it, is it? He warned re- the revenue office has ways to check if the home is unoccupied but refused to disclose them. Property Council Victoria, uh, Council's Victorian Executive Director, Kath Evans. I wonder if they're going to stuff this up and, uh, you know, and, and go after a shut-in or a neat said the announcement came as a shock to the industry after signing an affordability partnership with the government last month. It's clear that without consultation, there's not been good faith in the execution of the agreement to date, she said. One of the first acts of Ms. Allen's tenure as Premier was to slug Victorians with an increased tax, Shadow Treasurer Brad Rosewell noted. The Greens welcomed the proposed change, but suggested the tax would remain ineffective while vacancies were self-declared by property owners. Yes, the Greens probably want the Gestapo to go door-to-door to to check to make sure you're using your house, your property, that the state just blesses you with the right to use your own property. Ah, This is Australia, guys. This is where we're heading. Okay, it's just going to be more and more and more. More intervention into your personal life, your personal rights. Victorian Council of Social Services Interim Chief Executive Janita Pope said it was a smart policy to create a financial incentive for investors to build homes or relinquish empty land. Empty residential land banked by investors and land barons benefits not land barons. See, it's not about you ha- the government protecting your individual rights here. It's not about protecting your right to control and choose what you do with your private property. It's about them forcing you to behave like they want you to behave. The Victorian government last month announced an Australian first consumer-faced levy on short-term accommodation bookings. Uh, Yeah, and you know who's going to pay that. It's not going to be like interstate people. It's going to be families. It's going to be big families that go on holidays and want to stay in an Airbnb or a stays. Be like my family. That's who are paying for it, guys. The Victorians, they're cheering a tax that they're going to pay. And that's what a levy is. It's just another tax. It's more taxes. The proposed 7.5% levy was the only tax unveiled as part of Labor's long-awaited housing statement to boost supply amid a nationwide crisis. I don't think that's going to actually drive any people out of bloody Airbnb. They're just going to pass that on to the user. This is such stupid stuff. And they're already paying tax on the income they earn on that property. So let's chat about this. So this is how the Victorian government is trying to manipulate and nudge the owners of property to behave. That's what it is. I don't think it'll work. I don't think it'll make any more difference. It's just going to be more costs that people have to bear one way or another. It'll drive up the costs of developing on those properties if if it's been sitting vacant. What if, what if you have to, I don't know, uh, put a whole pile of dirt on it to adjust the the compaction ability of your land to create more support for the structure that you want to build. I remember those blocks 
what, on Christine Ave on the Gold Coast, sitting idle for a decade because they had to have, they piled land on it to make sure it was founding properly. Do you have to pay a tax for that? Probably charge you double for the land, you, dirt you put on top and the dirt are below. Anyway, guys, there you go, another tax. I mean, this is, this is labour. They're just going to tax you more and more. Well, the young people realise that they're not on your side, guys. Okay, I know it all sounds good. You don't, you don't like the evil coalition because they're the bad guys because they support business. Business, and they don't support it very well, but business is what creates opportunity. Business is what creates jobs. Government doesn't do that. The only way government gets resources is they take them from the populace or they borrow against the populace. And we've got to work it off one way or another. So I can't say I'm surprised. Yeah, there you go, Victoria. Good luck. Let me know your thoughts on this one, guys. Check out Heiser Bim or Heiser Does for other videos I create. And if you want to support the channel, you can on YouTube or Patreon. Use referral links, buy Pocket Squares, or call me if you need an architect. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>